Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Darwin Streams, the author of Darwin's Island A2, Diva Racing, Island Sleep Practice, Ryan Practice, Ninja Island Paintball, Sparta Mode, and House Pink System, and, and many, many more that you may have seen. You want to make your own Overwatch Workshop mod, and I'm gonna help you out with that. Let's go. For the first episode, we need something simple, but also something that can show different approaches to making a mod. Let's go with the simple fall damage script. It's been requested a lot and it's fun to make. Your number one step in creating any workshop mod is to evaluate your task. What is fall damage? Fall damage is the damage that's been applied when you fall. And two major questions you have to ask yourself are when to apply damage and how much damage to apply. Now to start making your mod, you go to settings and you go to workshop. Also, I will be using PTO version of the workshop, because that's the version that you will probably work with in the future. And here you can create rules. So the first question was, when to apply damage? And the answer is, we want to apply damage when player touches the ground, right? So we can make a rule, player hit the ground. And we're gonna make a condition, just type in ground like, if you think that this mod uses some ground value, just try to tap it and see if you can get something. It's very helpful. He's on ground. See, we use an event player for this condition. That means that we have to use event type ongoing each player. If you use any player variables, you have to use this type of rule. Now, what do we do when player touches the ground? We apply damage. So we put in damage. Event player, amount, let's say 20. Now what that will do? So now when we touch the ground, we got damage applied, you see, 20. But it will be applied every time we touch the ground, even if we jump a very small distance. So that's not exactly what we wanted, right? So what we want to do is we want to only apply damage when player hits the ground at a certain speed. And we can use vertical speed for that. But first, let's get a good understanding of what, what vertical speed is, what it looks like. And for that we're going to create a rule. And we're going to create a HUD element, that's an element of an interface. Create HUD text. And for the header, we'll put the value that we want to see. We'll put vertical speed of event player. Now that action will show us on the interface what's current vertical speed of a player is. You see in top left that's the UI element that we've created. Now if we jump or do anything on the vertical axis we'll show the speed. So you saw there when we hit the ground our highest speed was about negative 16. It's negative because we're going down. If we go up it will be positive. Okay, we need a condition of vertical speed. So we need to add a condition. Vertical speed of event player less, because we use negative values because he's going down. We want to put number into value. And let's say minus 10. So if vertical speed of event player is less than minus 10, which means he's going faster towards the ground, then we will apply damage. Now you wonder why it didn't work. Well, because vertical speed at the event of on ground is zero. Because when we reach the ground, the speed goes to zero. So when it checks this condition, your speed is not actually below minus 10, it's actually zero, which is above minus 10. Now you're thinking, how do I do that? You need to know vertical speed right before the player hit the ground. So you need that value from sometime in the past. And for that, we're going to create a new event. We're going to call it check vertical speed before on ground. It's going to be ongoing each player because we're still going to use player variables for that. And for the condition, we're going to use altitude of a player. Now, altitude is his current height in meters above a surface. Always read these two tooltips, they're very helpful. If altitude of event player is less 
than one meter. Which means he is about to hit the ground, but he's still one meter above the ground. We're gonna set player variable A to B is vertical speed. Now variables are a way to store and work with values. You can modify them, you can add, you can remove them. And in this scenario, when the player is one meter above the ground, player variable A will become his vertical speed at this very moment. So in here, instead of comparing vertical speed, we're gonna take player variable A and see if that is less than minus 10. Because that's his vertical speed when he was right about to hit the ground. Let's check that. Let me jump. There is no damage applied. Let me jump off the high ground. Damage is applied. What if we jump again? Oh no! Damage is being applied on each jump now. What happened? Now that's when you use Inspector. You press Escape, you can have you can see Workshop Inspector. It's the place to monitor variables of all players and global variables as well. We go to Darwin, and we see that our current player, player variable A is minus 16.2. Now what that means is that we have updated that value when we were above the ground, and now it's always minus 16. So every time we hit the ground, this variable is still minus 16, because it will only update when we a little bit above the ground. So what do we do with that now? We need some way to reset that variable, and we can do it with one simple rule. We're gonna add a condition. Is in air. So, which means that this whole block, this variable A, will be updated every time when player is in air and his altitude is less than 1. So if player jumps, his altitude is less than 1 and he's in air as well, the player variable A will be updated with his vertical speed at this moment. And if his vertical speed at this moment is less than minus 10, then damage will be applied. If it's above minus 10, then it will not be applied. And if player simply jumped, his speed will not be that high. Let's see. Now, normal jumps, no damage, high ground jump, damage. Now what if we jump off like slight high ground, no damage, because it's not high enough. We don't gain minus 10 vertical speed when we jump off that high ground. So perfect, the whole thing works, we have made a full damage script that works. Now how do we improve that? What else can we do with that? For example, we might want to apply different damage depending on how high were you. So we can tie vertical speed to how much damage we apply. We're back here. Now in this event, in this rule, we apply damage. And we always apply 20. How do we tie that to player's vertical speed? already store his vertical speed before he hits the ground in player variable A, which means we'll have to use that to calculate how much damage we want to inflict. We go to the action, to our damage action, and instead of fixed number, which is 20, we're gonna use some, some math, some simple math operation, like multiply. We can multiply our player variable a by some amount, let's say 1.5. So if player's vertical speed was 10, that would be 10 multiplied by 1.5. If player's vertical speed was 100, somehow, it will also be multiplied, so the damage will be 150. So the, the higher your vertical speed is, the more damage you're gonna take, multiplied by 1.5. And you can adjust that, make that 10, which means that it will be a very big difference in between how much damage you will take, depending on that height. But, if you remember, our vertical speed is actually negative. So if we multiply that by that, 
you're gonna have a negative amount of damage. And we don't want that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set that instead of 1.5, we're gonna set that to minus 1.5. So that we multiply negative value by another negative value. So we get positive value for the damage we want to apply. Let's see if we jump off that really high, really high ground. We took 23 damage points. Now, if we go to a not as high of a ground, like this one, we only took 18 damage. So our damage is now tied to vertical speed. Congrats! We made a pretty good 4 damage script. And the great thing is, you can still add stuff to it if you want. Like, we know when player hits the ground, when he's supposed to take damage. And you can do as many actions as you want here. We can, for example, we can play effect, bad explosion, red, radius, five. Position, event player. So every time player hits the ground when he's supposed to take full damage, there will be an effect of an explosion. I hope you guys found that video useful. If you did, hit that like, hit that subscribe, follow my Twitch channel, follow everything you can, and I'm gonna make more episodes when we go through more advanced stuff. We can try to make custom projectiles, all different kinds of ray casts, we can work with cameras. Put what you want to see next in the comments. What would you like to know how to make? Good luck and have fun with the workshop.